Hey, what's going on, guys? It's 12. Today, I'm going to be making a motion track tutorial. I'll be making a timer map tutorial soon, but I just wanted to make this one first. Before we get started, if you didn't see my last video, it's on the screen right here. All right, so let's get started. All right, so first thing you want to do is drag your clip in that you want to motion track. This is the motion track from Degrees episode. Um, I'm not going to be motion tracking at all because it's just too much. So I'm going to cut this up and I'll be right back. All right, so once you get the part that you want to motion track, I'm just going to be using this tiny bit so I don't have to do any masking because this originally was a really long motion track. So first thing you want to do is just right click, click track camera, click advanced, and click detailed analysis. All right, so I'll be back when this is finished. All right, so now that it's finished, you see that we have our tracking points right here. And just pick one that you want to be tracking onto or tracking at. I want to track into this wall. So we're just going to right click on the point and we're going to click create null and camera. So now you can see we have our camera and we have our null. I usually hide the null. It doesn't really make a difference, but I just like it to be hidden. All right, so there's a few things that we're going to do right now before we get started into the element. So the first thing is we're going to copy our original file that we motion track. It's going to take a minute to copy and paste because for some reason, if you have a camera tracker on it, it kind of like freezes and takes a while. But once it's finished, just delete the camera tracker. Find a good frame where you want to freeze it at for the environment. So once you have where you want it to freeze at, right click your file click time and freeze frame so now that you can see it doesn't move at all this is a freeze frame i usually like to rename it to nv1 or something for environment and we're going to hide this layer now other thing we're going to do is we're going to get out our text and we're going to write whatever we want for it to say on the motion track so i'm just going to do test for this tutorial the font i'm using is culture so hide your text layer so now we're going to right click and click new and then solid we're going to name this a 3d element whatever you want to we're going to click ok now we're going to go up to effect video copilot element so we're going to go over here to render settings physical environment override layer environment one or whatever you named it same thing goes for custom layers texture maps environment one and then go up here to custom text and masks and we're going to put our text layer on that now that we've done that we're going to go into scene setup and click extrude so here's our text, and I don't like it to be in the middle of the grid, so I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Um, I usually like to put a little extrude on it, though. Uh, go over to Presets. Go to Pro Shaders. If you don't have Pro Shaders, I would really recommend getting it because all the default textures and element aren't that good. So I usually use Metal. Metal, in my opinion, is the best one for motion tracking. I use Silver Rough the most, but uh, some other good ones are Metal Brushed. Uh, it's a little toned down and then there's metal grunge that has some like grunges on it and black spots um, but for this tutorial I'm going to be using silver rough so after you've done that click ok so now that we have had that you may or may not be able to see it it depends well yep see it's right here and that is obviously not where we want it we want it to be on this wall so we're going to go to our track null we're going to click P so we can get the position and then we're going to go over here to our 3D Go to group one or whatever group you have your text in and click position, copy this, paste, copy, paste. So now that is over on the wall, except obviously you're going to want it to be bigger and you're going to end up needing to put a plane on the back where the wall is. So it doesn't look like it's just floating so it cuts off a little bit now we're going to scale this up a little bit so we can see it a little better just do a rough positioning of where we want it to be so right between the little candles don't do too much because like i said we're going to need to do the plane so we're going to do that right now if you don't need to do the plane if you're not motion tracking on a wall you can skip this part i'll leave a timestamp right here okay so for the plane we're going to go back to scene setup we're going to go to primitives and we're going to scroll down to see plane we're going to make this its own group. So we're gonna pull it out of the group folder and click two. What I like to do is just move it up. I like to change the orientation to 90 degrees in here. It's just easier. So now that that's standing up, I like to scale it up a little bit as well. Now that we have that, we're gonna click okay. And we're going to now do the same. We're gonna copy the track null. So we're gonna go over here, scroll down. Now it's in group two. That's where we saved it as group two. So we're gonna do the same, we're gonna copy and paste, okay? So now that's over by the wall. This is the trickiest part, is to get it to look nice. So I like to go to an angle where you can kind of see the side of it. I'm actually gonna make the group one invisible. So you can click the enable check mark right there, scale it up. 
not too much because you're going to want to be able to see so as you can see it clearly does not line up with the wall so we're going to go over here to particle rotation and we're just going to rotate this to make it look like it's actually on the wall okay now this can take a really long time so i'm just going to speed through this and once i get it once i get it on the wall i'll be back I think that looks pretty well so what we're gonna do is go back into element click the drop down menu go to material grow all the way down and we're gonna click matte shadow so now that you can see it's disappeared so now we're gonna go back to group one we're gonna enable it we're gonna zoom in a little bit so now we have to line the text on the wall to make it look like it's on the wall now that, that is on there I think that is decent enough and obviously you want to spend a little more time with yours because it's gonna be a finished product and something you're gonna put in your edit this is just for demonstration purposes. We're gonna go to render settings. We're gonna go to ambient inclusion and we're gonna enable AO. We're gonna put lights in the environment so the shadows work with the lights and it looks a lot better. Don't do your motion tracks like that. It doesn't look very well. You need to make it look like it's in the environment and adding a bunch of shadows doesn't really do that. You need to make the shadows look like it's casting from the light that looks pretty decent so now what we're gonna do is we're going to do lights now this is the most frustrating because lights can be really retarded in after effects so what you want to do for the lights is click new click light and make sure you have these settings and uh, click ok so now you can see that it's changed because now there's a light casting onto it now what you want to do is do like you did before with the track null so click P on it so you have the position so just copy and paste the position onto the light and except this time now you have to do the point of interest on it as well so just copy and then click on the point of interest and paste so you want to keep your point of interest pretty much around it you don't want to move it i'm just going to move it in the middle of the text you're going to want to move your position of your light wherever the light's coming from so in my edit of this i had lights right here from the candles kind of like an orange looking light i just changed the colors i won't be doing it in this tutorial because it takes a really long time but same premise you just move the light over there and then you just go over down here click light options and change the color to orange pretty much what you want to do now is move the position of the light wherever the light is coming from so if you see in the motion track right here there's a window right here and there's light coming in from the window so that's how where i'm going to place the light at around this direction we're going to move this back a lot i can't really see where the light is that looks pretty decent okay so it should be coming somewhere from that direction so now this is where we're going to go into light options and we're going to turn the intensity down depending on how your scene is obviously obviously it's if it's not inside a building you probably don't really want to change the intensity that much because the sun in this case we're inside a building so we don't need it to be 100 percent the windows right there and the lights coming through and hitting the text so now we're going to go back into the shadows and make it a little more sensible and change the shadows around we're going to put up the intensity a little bit we're going to put up the radius a lot we're gonna move intensity up a little bit more some other things that we can do to make it look like it's more in the environment there's called a plugin called color matcher go over to target layer and click your environment layer that you had before um scenes like this i usually just put it really low so it kind of matches but not that much as you can see there's like some red tint to it now and you can also add like curves and stuff so that's pretty much it i'm going to leave the project file in the description so you can download it as same with the motion track cinematic so you can see everything and mess with it and change the text and do whatever you want so you can learn it a little better thanks for watching i hope this tutorial helped you peace out